So over the last couple of years, there have been so many reports about how Nancy Pelosi and her husband have been conspicuously making millions and millions of dollars by trading stocks. Now, it's a little bit sus, if you ask me, and to put it lightly, because this is a member of Congress, and not just any member of Congress. This is the Speaker of the House, and she's, in theory, supposed to be regulating these companies, but yet she's making millions of dollars off of them. And putting aside that conflict of interest, she is somebody with inside information. She's privy to details about the economy and industries that normal Americans don't have access to. So not only is it a conflict of interest, but it's unfair. Members of Congress have an unfair advantage compared to Americans with regard to the stock markets. And when Nancy Pelosi was asked about this, as you'll recall, she scoffed at the idea of banning stock trading for members of Congress. Members of Congress and their spouses be banned from trading individual stocks while serving in Congress. No, I don't know to this second one. Um, any, uh, we have a responsibility to report in the stock, uh, on the stock, but I don't, I'm not familiar with that five-month review, but if uh, people aren't reporting, they should be. Why should they be banned? Because uh, this is a free market and people we are a free market economy. They should be able to participate in that. Translation, it shouldn't be banned because I'm getting really, really fucking rich off of it. So deal with it. Now, Unusual Whales just released the report that finds that Nancy Pelosi is the most successful Democrat when it comes to the stock market. And these individuals made numerous unusually timed trades resulting in huge gains. And would you look at that? You have Austin Scott at the top of the list, Brian Mast, French Hill, John Curtis, Dan Crenshaw, and then Nancy Pelosi, right up there in the top 10 with Republicans. Nothing to worry about. This is a free market. We should allow this to continue to happen. No big deal. It's just, it's astonishing to me. Uh, but unfortunately for Nancy Pelosi, most Americans don't agree with her. Three out of four Americans think that members of Congress have an unfair advantage in trading stocks. And this poll was conducted by a conservative pollster, but there's been a consistent flow of other polls that show significant support for banning members of Congress. And in some instances, support for banning members of Congress and their families from trading stocks. Now, Nancy Pelosi, as corrupt as she is, is not stupid. She knows that this is unpopular, but she's probably done a cost-benefit analysis and determined that it's worth it. I think she probably would prefer to be viewed as corrupt if she can keep raking in lots and lots of money. Uh, but to her chagrin, a member of her own party is trying to rein in her corruption by introducing a bill that is the strongest yet with regard to banning members of Congress from trading stocks, because this one closes loopholes that previous bills contained. So as the New York Post reports, John Ossoff expected to snub Pelosi by pushing ban on Congress stock trades. Now, let's just pause right there. We're going to dive into the article, but uh, I, I just want to point out that this is not a bill that's named the Stop Nancy Pelosi from Being Corrupt Act, but he is floating this legislation right after Nancy Pelosi got rightful criticism for uh, scoffing at the idea of banning members of Congress from trading stocks. So his timing here is very conspicuous, and this is very obviously something that is going to make Nancy Pelosi angry. But nonetheless, he's doing it. So credit where it's due. I didn't think that John Ossoff had the backbone to actually stand up to members of his own party, but I'm glad that he's doing this nonetheless. So Georgia Senator John Ossoff is looking to introduce a bill that would ban members of Congress from trading individual stocks, a practice that House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has defended as her husband rakes in millions of dollars trading shares of tech companies. The Post has learned. The Ossoff ethics bill, which the Democratic freshman senator plans to introduce once he finds a Republican co-sponsor, would crack down on conflicts of interest by making it illegal for lawmakers and their families to trade stocks while in office, a Washington, D.C. source close to the situation said. It would also likely require lawmakers to put their assets in blind trusts, a step that the 34-year-old Ossoff completed himself months after being elected in January of 2021. No Senate Republicans appear to have publicly come out against congressional stock trades, so Ossoff may have trouble finding a co-sponsor in the Senate. But Republican support in the House is more likely since several GOP House members, including Texas Representatives Michael Cloud and Chip Roy, have come out against the practice. Now, you're probably thinking, wait a second, haven't there already been bills introduced that are similar to this? 
Yes, and you've probably heard about the Ban Conflicted Trading Act. This is the really popular one that a lot of members of Congress, surprisingly, have supported. I'm talking about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Rashida Tlaib, Ayanna Presley, progressives like that, but also corporate Democrats like Connor Lamb and even some Republicans, including Matt Gates. So this bill has support ranging from the left to the far right, and that's really interesting. But the problem with that particular piece of legislation is that it does not place a ban on the family members of Congress people. So if you don't close that loophole, then you're not really addressing the core issue here because Nancy Pelosi, in the event, she herself wasn't able to trade stocks, which she does do very frequently. She's a very active trader. Uh, then she just relay the inside information that she receives to her husband and she and he'd buy the stocks and they'd still continue to get rich. So I feel like this legislation isn't really going to suffice unless you have that loophole in their clothes. And thankfully, John Ossoff is proposing legislation that would close that loophole. My only criticism is that I don't know why Democrats always have to try to find a way to work in Republicans. You know that Republicans in the Senate at least probably aren't going to support this. I mean, if you get a Republican co-sponsor, great, because I think that that will make your bill more likely to gain momentum, at least with regard to the media. But if you can't find a Republican co-sponsor, don't sit on it. Just introduce it nonetheless and get this bill out there, because I want people in Congress to put their names on the record. Do they support open corruption, open conflicts of interest, or do they want to rein that in? I think this is really important, and I would like to see a vote on this. I'm not very optimistic about that, but the fact that John Ossoff is introducing this bill, honestly, kudos to him, because he knows this is going to piss off Democratic Party leadership, and good. They need to be challenged. They are the problem. They're not the only problem with the Democratic Party, but leadership is what is holding everyone else in the party back, and they have to be challenged, and they are openly corrupt, and that is why the Democratic Party has turned away from the working class. So if you start by targeting members who are the most corrupt, those at the top, that's when you really begin to make a difference. So this is a good bill, and I hope it gains momentum once it is introduced.